Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is a progressive and devastating neurodegenerative disease that leads to weakness and paralysis caused by death of motor nerves in the brain and spinal cord that enable our muscles to function. So when those nerves die, our muscles can't function, we develop weakness and paralysis, and it becomes progressive and very devastating, as you can appreciate. Now, after Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, ALS is the third most prevalent neurodegenerative disease affecting about 450,000 people worldwide. It typically strikes after the age of 50, although a minority of cases occur in people who are younger. A fantastic review of the latest breakthroughs in ALS was published in the journal Biomedicine in August of 2021, which provided insights as to how we may be able to prevent many cases of Lou Gehrig's disease through diet, lifestyle, and especially practices using supplements, dietary supplements. It's a quick summary of how you might achieve this. The authors of the study highlight the critical role of the B vitamin niacin, vitamin B3, which the body converts into NAD. NAD is nicotine adenine dinucleotide. But let's just call it NAD. So when you swallow the B vitamin niacin or B3, the body converts it into NAD. And NAD is required by brain cells for energy production, also to protect brain cells against certain toxic substances and reduce blood flow when that occurs. It also preserves the integrity and function of the brain cell axon. The axon of the brain cell is what transmits electrical impulses from one nerve to the next. It also, NAD also preserves mitochondrial function. Mitochondrial is the energy factory within the brain cell so the nerve cell can make energy. And NAD is required for brain cells to make glutathione, which is a critically important brain cell antioxidant that protects brain cells from free radical damage that would otherwise kill them. And NAD activates longevity and survival gene genes, directly stimulates them. As an epigenetic switch, these, these types of genes known as the sirtuin genes, like the sirtuin-6 gene that's in nerve cells. So research clearly shows that a consistent finding in ALS is a depletion of NAD levels in the brain of ALS patients. In fact, we know that NAD levels decline for all of us to a certain degree as we age. But it appears likely that in persons who are genetically prone to develop ALS, because they're born with a certain genetic defect in what's known as the SOD1 mutation, we'll talk about that. But those individuals, once a critical level of NAD is depleted in their brain, this seems to be when the, the, the disease gets triggered. In fact, the best documented genetic mutation for ALS risk is the presence of this SOD1 mutation. So the SOD1 means, SOD stands for superoxide dismutase. Normally brain cells make an antioxidant to protect themselves from free radicals called the superoxide dismutase 1 uh, antioxidant enzyme. But in people who are genetically prone to the development of Lou Gehrig's disease, that gene is faulty. They're born with a faulty gene. So free radicals build up. It eventually overwhelms the brain cells and nerve cells in the, the, uh, the, the spinal cord, and the nerve cells die, and you have weakness and paralysis. In individuals who are born with the SOD1 mutation, their SOD1 enzyme doesn't work, and thus free radicals build up more easily, triggering nerve cell death and the onset and progression of Lou Gehrig's disease. But animal studies and preliminary human studies are showing that supplementation with NAD or its precursors like niacin vitamin B3 can replenish brain levels of NAD, which in turn acts to protect nerve cells from dying and increases their synthesis of glutathione, which is a critically important antioxidant that can to some degree compensate for the lack of free radical protection from a faulty SOD1 antioxidant enzyme. Interestingly, NAD and glutathione are, are both shown to be lower in the brains of ALS patients compared to healthy individuals. In fact, halting free radical damage to the brain has been a focus of medical intervention in recent years and has led to the approval of an antioxidant drug called Adarivone that is approved for, for ALS therapy. So doctors are now prescribing an antioxidant drug. That's how important these free radicals are. Quench them and the brain cell lives. 
But the antioxidant drug Adarivone is not the only thing that's been showing promise in improving ALS studies. For example, the administration of high-dose melatonin given as a suppository type of uh, rectal suppository at high dose, as well as high dose oral administration of melatonin along with a cocktail of other supplements as shown in ALS patients to help them recover some lost muscle function. So it reverses the disease in some people to some degree, slows the progression of the disease, and these individuals have been shown to live longer than ALS patients not given the high dose melatonin. Other studies show that antioxidant supplements like NAC and acetylcysteine, we call this NAC, it replenishes brain cells glutathione levels. So if you want to raise your glutathione levels, you take NAC or N-acetylcysteine, gets into the brain and it speeds up the synthesis of glutathione. It's shown tremendous promise in ALS prevention in animal models of this disease. So to summarize what I've outlined in this update and to make it practical, the following are sort of considerations that you may want to employ to help prevent Lou Gehrig's disease with the best knowledge that we have available right now. So number one, you might want to consider taking a high potency multiple vitamin and mineral each day that contains 50 milligrams of niacin, vitamin B3. This helps to prevent the age-related decline in NAD levels in the brain that has been shown to contribute to the onset of ALS, but also to the development of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease. All these neurodegenerative diseases seem to, to be uh, influenced in a negative way when NAD levels decline in the brain. So you want to keep your NAD levels at, a, at an optimal amount throughout your lifetime. A high potency multiple vitamin and mineral would also have increased amounts of antioxidants like 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 400 IUs of vitamin E, 15,000 IUs of beta carotene, 200 micrograms of selenium as an example. Compared to sort of your typical drugstore multiple vitamin, which is going to just be sort of low doses of these things, you, want to, you need to boost those antioxidants and get the full B50 complex. So this is more of a premier type of a multiple vitamin. Also, after age 40, another consideration is to take melatonin. After age 40, uh, at a time when melatonin levels are declining in the brain quite significantly, I would consider taking one to three milligrams of melatonin about one hour before bedtime. Melatonin is not only an important brain antioxidant, quenching free radicals, but it's also been shown to prevent the death of motor nerve cells that are in the ALS disease uh, um, uh, physiology. A critical way to help to maintain motor nerve cell function is to maintain enough melatonin in the brain. Those ALS studies have been showing that, that if there's enough melatonin, often those, those motor neurons don't die. Of course, melatonin also helps you reach deeper levels of sleep, which in itself is renewing. It also supports immune system function, and it helps to protect breast and prostate cells from changes that are linked to cancer. These are all reasons to consider melatonin supplementation as you get older. Also, after the age of 45 to 50, consider taking a supplement each day to help your body synthesize glutathione optimally. Typically, a supplement of this nature includes the following ingredients. So if you want to boost your glutathione synthesis, you, what you need is NAC, N-acetylcysteine, and alpha lipoic acid and L-glutamine and milk thistle, which contains selimarin. These four things together, NAC, alpha-lipoic acid, L-glutamine, and selimarin from milk thistle have been shown to boost glutathione synthesis in the cells of the body. As you get older, this becomes really important because glutathione levels tend to decline and your free radical protection drops. Some evidence also suggests that taking 30 to 100 milligrams a day of coenzyme Q10 after the age of 45 may also be a prudent step in the prevention of various neurodegenerative diseases. This is especially true for Parkinson's disease, but may have application for Alzheimer's and ALS as well. Now, for really highly motivated individuals like myself, I, I might suggest that after the age of 45 to 50 that you consider seeing an integrative or anti-aging medical doctor or a naturopath who can administer glutathione or NAC intravenously once a month or once every two months to really help ensure optimal levels of brain glutathione levels. The same holds true for NAD, which can also be administered via IV 
usually at a dose of 250 or 500 or 750 milligrams per dose. There are also NAD sublingual products in the marketplace that can also efficiently deliver NAD right to the brain by preventing its degradation via the di digestive process. So sublingual NAD is becoming a very popular uh, administration route to get NAD to the brain as well. So if this subject is of interest to you, then I would encourage you to read the entire 2019 review article on this subject. I've provided a link to that research article in the text below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.